What is going on guys and welcome to the video. So I'm really excited to be doing this video. It's going to be a somewhat simple video, but I think it's gonna have a really good take home message. This video is about my experience or my recent experience with getting a DEXA scan done. So the inner scientist in me really wanted to do something a little bit different with a DEXA scan video. And I kind of wanted to show you a few variables that can affect your DEXA scan. Before we jump into all the numbers and what I ended up doing and what ended up happening. Just really briefly, I'm gonna tell you what a DEXA scan is if you're not really familiar. So DEXA stands for Dual Energy X-ray Absorptiometry. It is a three compartment model that shoots low dose radiation to detect different parts of your body. So it detects bone mineral content, fat, and then fat-free mass. So basically everything that's not fat, which is like your organs, muscles, levels of water in your body. Little changes that you do can really affect the fat-free mass. DEXA is used very commonly in the literature. It has been touted to be kind of like the gold standard nowadays to measure body composition. It's originally designed for measuring bone mineral content, but we use it in exercise science, kind of like as a modality or one of the main modalities to measure body composition. It's pretty well known that there is a nice bit of error with DEXA, I think ranging in the literature between like five and 10%. Now I'm not knocking the DEXA. I think it's a great tool for measuring body composition. However, I just wanna make you guys aware of its limitations. Okay, let's begin with my experiment. So I went to the University of Tampa and big shout out to Chris Bearcat. He's the one who did all of this for me and I really, really appreciate it. He currently works at the University of Tampa as a professor. So we made it to the University of Tampa and I am here with Chris Bearcat. Chris is a really, really smart guy. We go way back, we've been friends for a while. He has a master's in exercise and nutrition science, and he is going to be performing my DEXA on me. Say hello, Chris, first. Hey, <laughs> I, I'm, I take over and I talk a lot. We're going to get started with the DEXA, but before we do that, um, I'm actually gonna weigh in first. Before I came in the morning of, he told me not to have too much water, maybe just a, either like a cup of water or coffee. The day before the DEXA, I drove from Jacksonville to Tampa, and I just found myself, I, I didn't eat very much. The whole four hour drive, I didn't have anything. And then I ate something light right before I went to bed. I went to bed very early because I knew I had to wake up early to do the DEXA. So I was pretty low carb that day. I didn't train. And I honestly might not have had as much water as I normally do because I seem to drink a ton of the, my total water for the day, especially when I'm training. Because I didn't train, I just know that I didn't drink as much water as I normally do because I didn't want to have to use the bathroom every five minutes when I was driving. I know I wasn't just drinking a lot of water. So first day, first DEXA, not as much water, pretty low carbs and no training. So I walked into the lab that morning and I weighed 117 pounds, which is actually really low for me. That was a super low weigh in. I just felt like I knew that I looked light. Um, I did look at myself in the mirror that morning. I visually looked lean. I feel like I visually looked pretty lean that morning that was reflected in my weight. And my readings for day one, so my weight was 117 pounds. My percent body fat was 16.6%. So what that translates all to, because it does give you these exact uh, measurements in grams. So I took the grams and I converted it to pounds for you guys, just to give you some context. So it said that of my total body weight, that 19 pounds of my total body weight weight was just fat. And then I had 92 pounds of fat-free mass or lean mass, and then the rest being bone. So 19 pounds of fat and 92 pounds of lean mass. After all the DEXA was done, we did it early in the morning. That day, I went to the gym. I ate a lot more carbs. I was feeling pretty hungry because I knew that I ate light the day before. So after my DEXA, I was super hungry. I ate very well. I ate pretty high carb that day. And I know for a fact that I drank a lot more water because during the whole measurement process of like the DEXA and getting there, I couldn't have water. So I was really thirsty after and I was feeling kind of dehydrated from the day before. So I drank a ton of water that day. So those are the three factors, training, high carb, and lots of water. So I went in the next day and I did another DEXA and I wanted to see how these, not dramatic changes, I didn't have like a cheat day or anything like that, but how these changes would affect the readings that the DEXA scan would do. So my prediction for all of this was that my fat mass, like the actual amount of fat, was gonna stay the same. But I thought 
lot due to hydration and carbohydrates, which for every gram of carbohydrates, you usually store three to four grams of water. So because of all those things, I knew that my lean body mass was actually going to probably go up. My weight was reflected in the amount of like food volume um, and water I was probably holding on to. So I weighed 119 pounds. So I was two pounds higher the next day. I really wanted to see what the changes were reflected in the actual fat mass and lean body mass. So this was actually really surprising. My fat mass was actually lower and my lean body mass obviously went up. So my percent total body fat went to 14.9% on the second day. If you were just reading like your weight on the scale, you might think, oh, did I just gain like two pounds of fat, which sometimes we can do. So just to show, give you some perspective, I actually decreased the fat mass from 19 pounds of fat to 17.5 pounds of fat. So I apparently lost a pound and a half of fat overnight. My lean mass went from 92 pounds to 96 pounds. Now, that was four pounds of lean mass that went up overnight. I didn't gain four pounds of muscle. It was obviously due to water because that will compose the fat-free mass, but it just gives you some perspective that not only did my lean body mass go up, but my fat mass went down. Okay, so what is the point of all of this? So I did all of these measurements and like, what's really the point? I obviously didn't lose 1.5 pounds of fat overnight by eating more um, and drinking more water. And I obviously didn't gain four pounds of muscle overnight. So that is just something obviously to keep in mind. I'm not assuming that you guys thought that, but it's just like based off these readings, if I had just had one standalone reading, it would be kind of misleading because the first day it actually said my percent body fat was higher and that I had more body fat, but I appeared much leaner and I weighed less. So I just want this to be some sort of like mental, maybe thought experiment for you that, you know, when you do take these measurements, whether it be on a DEXA or if you have any other modality of measuring body fat, these numbers do not dictate your real body composition. They do do not dictate how you actually look and that they're just an estimation of where you are at the moment. They can be amazing tools for gauging progress. But another thing that I really wanted to leave you with that there are more important and maybe better ways of gauging progress. For one being, like I said, I felt like I looked way leaner the first day. I think on the second day, because of all the carbs, I appeared a little bit softer. My weight was obviously up a little bit. Maybe I was a little bit more bloated, but the way that you look really does matter. I know that's very cliche to say, but look in the mirror, see how you visually look. Also a good gauge is to see how your clothes are fitting you and how you just overall feel. Like, do you feel good? Do you feel like tight? Do you feel like how you're feeling that day is obviously a good metric or to give more tangible metrics for gauging progress. A really, really, if not the most important thing is performance in the gym. So if you are getting stronger over time, there's good reason to believe that you are building lean muscle because you really, really wanna be focusing on your performance at the gym, whether it be you're getting stronger on lifts or you're getting stronger with certain machines that you're using, or if you are practicing better technique with really complex movements and you're just overall just improving your performance in the gym. So that's something that I think is even more important than anything overall. The more lean body mass that you have, inherently the percent body fat that you have should go down. So you wanna increase the amount of muscle that you have. So that's always the goal is to make some gains. So I really hope that this video taught you something. I know it was really simple, really short, kind of to the point. Of course, these numbers can give you some information, but it shouldn't be all the information. Like you just take information from everything that you have. If you're getting stronger in the gym and over time, maybe these numbers are decreasing because of measurements that you take between three and six months, not overnight, putting yourself within the same conditions so you can control for all these confounding variables that do affect these things and that you shouldn't be too hyper-focused on the numbers. If you are a female, like your menstrual cycle is really, really, really going to change the amount of body water that you are holding on to. Just all of these factors are going to affect the output of these measurements. So I really hope that you enjoy this video. I hope that you found it a little bit informative. If you wanna read a little bit more on like the pitfalls of a DEXA or just you're just interested in reading more on this kind of uh, scientific stuff, I'm gonna link down below James Krieger's article on the pitfalls 
pitfalls of Adexa. I found that article and his website in general just really, really interesting. It's called Weightology, so I highly recommend it to people who are always looking to learn a little bit more. If you like these types of informative videos, please give the video a big thumbs up and comment down below anything or any other topic you'd like to see me cover. I'm going to link a video right here where I did get a bunch of different body fat measurements if you were interested in other videos like it. And right here you can subscribe. I love you guys so, so, so much. I will see you in a video very soon. Until next time.